If you're a villain and you need somebody dead, there's a lot to recommend an elaborate death trap. They're both convenient and dramatic for when you don't want to get your hands dirty but do want to murder your nemesis as ostentatiously as possible. However, our research indicates that in practice, intricate automated death traps have such a tremendous rate of failure that they're often not worth the bother. See? Rubbish! Just take a look at these ludicrously impractical death traps that were, in the end, easily escaped and think twice before installing your next spike-covered ceiling. People's responses to the zombie apocalypse tend to fall into two categories. There are those who focus on helping humanity scratch out a new existence and rebuild society in a hostile environment, and then there are those who use all that free time to construct an elaborate death maze. You're in our game now, the game of life and death. Rules are simple, you win or you die. No prizes for guessing what this guy chose. Bozak from Dying Light DLC The Bozak Horde has renovated the huge Haran Stadium to turn it into a vast, zombie-filled obstacle course. What's more, to ensure your compliance, he's outfitted you with this year's hottest piece of ankle wear. Hot in so far as, yes, it is a bomb that will explode if you tamper with it. Don't touch it. A bomb on your ankle will rip it to shreds. Bozak's nefarious plan involves you completing 20 increasingly deadly challenges that will test your combat and free-running skills to their very limit. You'll have to kill dangerous virals, disarm bombs, and, cruelest of all, do fiddly first-person platforming. <laughs> Bozak, you monster! Evil mastermind Bozak is clearly confident he's thought of everything, given that he's constantly chiming in via tannoys throughout the maze and taunting you, like this, after you complete the second of his challenges. I mean, not to get meta, Bozak, but it'd be a pretty short DLC if it was over. There is, however, one thing that Bozak failed to account for. A slim glimmer of hope for his victims. A single weakness in his otherwise watertight plan. You just turning around right at the start and leaving via this exit. Yeah, come on Bozak, this is Death Maze 101. Have you never seen a Saw movie? So glad you finally decided to show up. If you want to meet your comrade, Walk through those doors. The tricky part of being a professional vampire hunter is differentiating between myth and reality when it comes to destroying vampires. You don't want to find out the hard way that crosses have no power to harm your targets. That's embarrassing. Which is why the International Vampire Hunting Foo Syndicate in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines takes the scientific approach when you drop by their office building in LA. Where the scientific approach means an elaborate series of would-be death traps designed to test you, a vampire, for vampire weaknesses. I'm going to run some tests on you. I'm interested in how you work, but only because it's my task to find the most efficient way to kill your kind. Some of these supposed vampire death traps are straight up failures, like the chamber filled with UV light. Test chamber has been filled with ultraviolet light, releasing moderate UV radiation. Does that burn at all? No, but congratulations, you've invented the tanning bed. Or there's the bit where you're tested with a cross by the Foo Syndicate technician who drew the short straw that day. Oh my god! See? Embarrassing. <laughs> Other elements of this death trap experiment are more potentially deadly if only they hadn't been so poorly engineered. Like the slow-moving laser array that you can easily dodge, or the spinning blades that you can easily shoot because they let you bring a gun in. Or the Tesla coils that you can also easily shoot because, again, they let you bring a gun in. In fact, just about the only element of this vampire obstacle course that was designed properly are the vampire-proof walls. The walls are reinforced concrete, several feet thick. There is no other exit. Believe me, it is my design. Great work, my friend. If only you hadn't installed this explosive flamethrower next to the viewing window in your precious concrete walls. Don't be disheartened, I guess you did learn one thing about vampires today. Don't let them bring a gun in. Take that! Let's 
be honest, the world of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is absolutely riddled with traps. You can barely make it three paces into a dungeon without having to dodge some spiky ball or other. Somewhere in Cyrodiil, there's a home security business making an absolute killing. Several killings, in fact. You'll have to negotiate plenty of these dungeons if you want to become a fully fledged member of the Mages Guild though, the most notable example being in the quest where you're sent to find a missing member of the guild by Archmage Hannibal Traven, a man who is sadly suffering a terrible curse that makes his face resemble a lightly shriveled potato. Greetings. It is high time that we met face to face, don't you think? Ah, no, wait, I remember. That's just how everyone looked in Oblivion. Traven wants you to head to some ancient ruins to find an informant called Mucianus Elias, but a group of battle mages have also been dispatched and they think Elias is a traitor. Your job is to get to him before he's intercepted by this crack squad of hardened battle mages, a class described as being a deadly combination of scholar and soldier. Only when you get there, there's only one battle mage left, Fithraga, whose voice actor delivers his lines like he's been given 30 seconds in which to earn that Oscar nomination. Fithraga, battle mage, sent by the council to find this traitor. Which is hardly surprising because 30 seconds later, this happens. Follow me. Well, now he's a dead combination of scholar and soldier. Seemingly missing the copious amounts of blood all over the floor, Fithraga has stumbled into a trap that raises the floor into an array of ceiling spikes, a trap that can be easily circumvented by simply jumping over to the side. And even if you are unfortunate enough to end up caught in it, it does barely any damage to you and resets almost immediately, allowing you to walk away with all your organs unskewered. I mean, you might find your hair is parted a different way, but that's about it. You can even try and save Fithraga by, say, paralysing him before he can dive headfirst into an easily avoidable spike trap. There's no need to get violent! You might even be successful, and it's at that point it becomes clear that he only has a single hit point when he's summarily killed by the very next scrub necromancer in the dungeon. <laughs> You know, I don't think I want to be a battle mage anymore. These guys suck. Okay, yes, it's a trap, but it's the only way through. Let's just do it. There's a lot of things to not enjoy about death traps. The dying, for one thing, and the being trapped for another, which is why you sort of have to appreciate this fresh new take on death trap design in Portal 2, which puts the choice of being death trapped entirely in your hands. Don't mind me, continue escaping. Towards the end of Portal 2, after your blundering AI friend Wheatley has outed himself as a blundering AI villain, the death traps start coming at you thick and fast. Ha! Death trap! Well, I'll take it. With all civilised notions of doing portal tests for scientific research long forgotten, your path to freedom becomes an increasingly unsubtle, deadly obstacle course. Holmes versus Moriarty. Aristotle versus Mashu Spike Plate. Stay still, please! Lucky for you though, it transpires that Wheatley is as ungifted at designing death traps as he is at everything else, even with the plentiful and deadly resources of Aperture Science at his disposal. There I was, smashing some steel plates together, and I thought to myself, yeah, it's deadly, but what's missing? What's missing? And I'll... No, 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 don't do that, don't... stand right here, stand... Stop. Stop. Stop machine. The least impressive of all these attempted death traps, though, is a last-ditch effort from Wheatley to halt your progress before reaching him for a final confrontation, face-to-face, toe-to-toe, mano a machino. The death traps have been a bit of a failure so far for both of us, I think you'll agree, and you are getting very close to my lair. In this most pathetic of the weakly designed death traps, your self-styled nemesis removes the catwalk from beside a moderately fast-moving conveyor belt and invites you to just give up and let said conveyor belt feed you into an industrial masher. I just wanted to give you the chance to kill yourself there before you get to the lair. Uh, you can just jump into that masher just there. Uh, less a death trap, more a death option. Like I say, you've got to admire the fresh thinking of the death trapper offering the death trapee the choice of dying or not. But also, I didn't come all this way and complete all these portal puzzles to get smashed flat on a conveyor belt. Okay, I'll take that as a no then. Sorry, I'd say good effort, but actually it wasn't. What do you think? You game? Ladies first. If you say so. <sighs> 
God, I'm not claustrophobic. Hunting for treasure in ancient temples is a risky business fraught with elaborate traps designed to protect said treasures by deterring or killing would-be tomb raiders. You're not going to get us trapped in a small dark space 30 meters underground, are you? Probably. When you've been in the business for as long as Nathan Drake, though, you learn to appreciate the classics. And death traps don't get any more classic than a ceiling covered with spikes that crushes you. <laughs> Could be worse, right? I put it to you that actually the spikes are a case of redundant over-engineering because a flat ceiling will crush you as dead as a spiky one, but who am I to tell ancient death trap designers how to do their job? Anyway, these old-timey trap makers must have known a thing or two about mechanical engineering because this particular trap has a clever system of giant gears to slowly lower the ceiling onto its victims. What these ancient engineers could not have foreseen was Nathan Drake dropping into their death trap with a gun, with which he can easily shoot the teeth off of their giant stone gears, which are as brittle as they are fully exposed. Ha <laughs> ha, we did it. Let's get the hell out of here. Guns won. Ancient trap technology. Zero. Guy Brush Threepwood. You have finally been caught. I have searched every island, sailed every sea, and now you are mine. Usually when a baddie constructs a ridiculously complicated method for killing the hero of the game, it's a prideful, hubristic act, designed as much to showcase their own evil brilliance as it is a means to actually murder anyone. That's why it's so refreshing that with his pit full of flesh dissolving acid, LeChuck from Monkey Island 2 actually has something more practical in mind. I will take your bones, still alive and in great pain, and make them into a chair. I will call it my screaming chair. Every morning I will sit in it and listen to you scream. Let's suppose they didn't have Ikea back in pirate times. That's not to say LeChuck hasn't allowed some unnecessary complexity to creep into his death trap design. What with it relying on a candle burning through a rope, a bellows firing a bullet that ricochets off several items in the room, and a green balloon bursting. When it pops, it will cause that lever to fall, releasing that ratchet on the chain wheel, and sending you down into the pit of acid. <laughs> Though to be fair, that's no more complex than the average puzzle in a LucasArts point-and-click game. Guybrush and Wally the cartographer appear to be doomed, until you realise that with a well-aimed gobbit of spittle, you can extinguish the candle and make good your escape. Arr! What be going on in here? Largo! Relight the candle! <sighs> Guybrush has escaped! How exactly you get out of the shackles, in the dark, without accidentally falling in the acid is unclear. Details. Minor details. When you emerge, you find yourself in a scenario that's arguably even more deadly, as you light a match in a room full of TNT and cause an explosion so enormous it blasts you all the way into the next part of the game. Of course, you can leave Guybrush and Wally hanging there until the candle burns through the rope, activating the mechanism and lowering them into the pit of acid. But you're saved at the last minute by something even the dread zombie pirate LeChuck can't stop. The framing narrative. Horse hockey. You honestly expect me to believe you were disintegrated in acid? And now LeChuck is going to have to wait 200 years for IKEA to be invented. Still, he's taking it well. Which I'll be using to torture you and then send you screaming to another dimension, one of infinite pain. Relatively well. Oh my god. <gasps> you like my work? In the 1995 horror point-and-click game Phantasmagoria, you play as Adrienne Delaney, a novelist and nightmare haver. Adrienne is married to Don here, who has equally nice hair. You don't ever have to be afraid of anything. I'll always be here to protect you. 
By the end of the game, though, Don is possessed by and dressed as a dead guy named Carno, who back when he was alive practiced both dark magic and escapology because some people don't know how to pick a lane. A woman's body is a wonderful thing, but the head is useless. <laughs> Mm. Soon, Adrienne's possessed escapologist spouse straps her into one of Carno's most famous escapology tricks, which is a big chair with an axe that comes down and chops you in the head. The trouble with using an escapology trick as a death trap is that escapology tricks are by design escapable, especially when you leave your wife's hand free to show you a souvenir snowman that reminds you of all the good times you had before this little bump in the road. Remember when you gave that to me? <laughs> That distraction is the opening Adrienne needs to pull the big lever that drops the axe. So, a decent escapology trick there, but a terrible death trap. Sorry, Don. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it. It really helps us out. And you can subscribe and hit the little bell notification icon if you'd like to be notified every time we make a video. Now, what you should do right now is head to one of these two videos up here, one from us and one from our sister channel, Outside Extra, or we'll have to activate the elaborate death trap we have prepared for you that definitely isn't easily escapable. Damn it.